Welcome to our lecture online. On the previous video we looked at the structure of a proton and we learned that it was made up of quarks. But now we're going to take a look at the structure of an atom and specifically the mass of an atom versus the volume of an atom where that mass is distributed. Now to make things simple we're going to take a look at the hydrogen atoms because hydrogen atoms simply have one proton in the nucleus and one electron forming the orbits around the nucleus which essentially forms the shell of the atom around the nucleus. So when we take a look at it we can imagine that atoms are like little balls and at the very center of the ball we have the nucleus which is made up of a proton and then the electrons zip around the nucleus so many times every second that essentially makes a hard shell of existence and so atoms are stacked up on their shells and their shells are fairly strong and it's hard to penetrate those shells. Now the size of the nucleus in diameter is about 1.7 femtometer. Well, a femto is 10 to the negative 15, so it's a very tiny, tiny object at the center of that nucleus. And then the diameter of the atom itself is about 100 pic picometers, about a tenth of a nanometer. A picometer is 10 to the minus 12. And so the diameter ratio is roughly 50,000 to 1, maybe a little closer to 60,000 to 1, but it's an enormous ratio that nucleus is extremely tiny in diameter compared to the size of the of the actual atom. And then if we do a volume comparison, notice that the volume ratio is about 200 trillion to 1. The nucleus takes up a very, very tiny fraction, 1 out of 200 trillion of the total volume of the, of the atom. And then what's surprising is, is that the nucleus has the vast majority of the mass. The mass of the nucleus is more than 99.9% the mass of the entire atom. So it takes up an, a tiny, tiny fraction of volume, but it has almost all of the mass. And that's the interesting part of the structure. Now, notice that if we calculate the volume of a single proton, which is about 2.5 times 10 to the minus 45 cubic meters, so the volume of a proton is, is so enormously small, then we can imagine that there's a lot of protons that could fit into a cubic centimeter. So if we somehow could stuff a cube, about one cubic centimeter in size, full of protons, now you may say, well, wait a minute, protons, they repel each other, and so there's no way you can stuff that many protons in a, in a cube, and that's absolutely correct. But of course, we could do it with neutrons, because neutrons do not have charge, and they're the same, pretty well the same size and the same mass as a proton. So again, let's just forget for a moment that they're positively charged and they repel each other, we can stuff protons into a little cube. Well, that would be about 3.9 times 10 to the 38 protons I could fit into that little cubic centimeter. And then realizing that each proton has a mass of about 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, well, that means that if you fill one cubic centimeter up with protons, you'd have a mass of about 65 billion kilograms or about 65 million tons stuffed into a little volume well actually smaller than a capitalist pen wow so you can imagine that if you were to fill the whole atom with nuclear material it would be enormously heavy it, the mass would be unbelievable so it's kind of interesting to realize that each atom has its mass concentrated in that tiny little ping in the middle called a proton, or of course if you have a heavy element then um, you'd have a number of protons, a number of ne neutrons, but again the size ratio would be about the same. So imagine that all the mass would be at that very tiny little center called the nucleus, and then the volume would then be enormous in comparison. 200 trillion to 1, and the mass is therefore distributed in such a way that you can actually make a lot of matter with a very small amount of mass. And that's kind of interesting when you think about it, because then if you think, of course, that E equals mc squared, and we know that all of the mass in the universe had to come from energy, it's kind of an efficient way to make matter. A tiny little mass at the very center of an enormous sized, well, atom, well, that could do the trick. So the electrons provide the volume of the atom and the mass is provided by the small little proton in the middle. And that is how that's done.
uh, atoms in the entire universe, galaxy, the universe. You crunch it all down so there's no spaces in between it. Ah, that's a good question. How big would that be? I guess that's for our next video because I can't think of the number right offhand, but yeah, that, that would be a really interesting calculation. There's about 200 billion known galaxies in the universe. If you crunch them all down and push a proton and neutron against proton and neutron, how big would that be? That's a real interesting question. So we'll do a video on that.